We are in Cleveland, Ohio. And the weather sucks. The town that spring has forgotten. Yeah, we're here for three days. All three days. This is the weather we're getting. Okay. Blows. You know, I usually like to explore downtown, get a drone shot. That's not happening. Uh, we're at a parking garage near Lake Erie. That is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That is where we're going right now. It's why we're staying an extra day here. Going to the Rock Hall of Fame is on my bucket list. And uh, I was hoping to get some nice shots at downtown. But no. <laughs> There's kind of a cool look to all the clouds though, huh? The fog sh uh, shrouding the buildings. Anyway, we're going to head over there. The Rock Hall is right there, right on the uh, coast of the Lake Erie. What were you going to say, huh? Sorry, I was just going to say I am rethinking these holy jeans because the cool air is going through them. Yeah, it's a little chilly. Not pleasant at all. Here's the Cleveland skyline, shrouded in clouds. Just giving you a look at what I'm seeing right this minute. Anyway, you are probably wondering, just as I was, how is it that Cleveland, Ohio got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, here it is. As you most likely know, rock music has its basis in the blues music of the Deep South, particularly Memphis, and um, in the 30s and 40s, white musicians began reinterpreting that music into their own style, but it really wasn't getting played on radio stations until 1951, when a Cleveland DJ named Alan Freed began playing it full time on his radio station. Now, as he was playing the music, he coined it rock and roll. And it is for that reason that is generally considered that Cleveland is the birthplace of rock and roll. And so that is the reason the hall is here in this city. All right, we've got our wristbands. Are you going to save yours? And we are heading in, down that escalator. Heading down into the uh, museum, there's a hot dog <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. A lot of Beatles stuff. We are inside the museum now. Looking forward to seeing what's all in here. This is Bob Marley's Rasta hat. I've always been a big fan of Bob Marley. All right, Bill Haley's guitar of Bill Haley in the Comets. Right in the beginning, it's about Elvis, as well it should be. One of the famous suits that Elvis wore. Awesome. All right, this is one of Elvis Presley's first guitars. Alice Cooper's boots. And Angus Young outfit from ACDC. A Rolling Stones pinball machine from 1980. Don't laugh, but I think I played this one when I was a kid. Because I was in high school in 1980. Yeah. Billy Joel's handwritten uh, lyrics for Big Shot. Huh. And for Moving Out. That's crazy. One of my favorite groups of all time, ZZ Top. Their instruments, Billy Gibbons' guitars, Frank Beard's drums, <laughs> Dusty Hill's bass. Another one of my favorite bands of all time, Depeche Mode. They got in last year. All right, the handwritten lyrics for How Can You Mend a Broken Heart by the Bee Gees. I love that song. And in Cherry Bomb, written by Joan Jett and Kim Fowley of The Runaways, a band that I really liked as a kid. Some David Bowie stuff, an outfit he wore on stage, 
and his guitar. Some Alice Cooper stuff, his jacket, a couple of his jackets, and that chair. I think I saw him sit, sit in that chair at a concert I attended. <laughs> of course, you've got to have the Michael Jackson glove. And there it is. Famous glove. So, a heart display a dress that Ann Wilson wore. I saw these guys in concert probably four times. Huge fan. Nancy Wilson's guitar. Another cool pinball machine, Dolly. It's nice. Heading to our next exhibit. It's quite a show. Prince's famous guitar. Is it from Purple Rain, right? No, I don't, I don't think it is. I saw him play it a lot of times in videos. My favorite album of all time is Pink Floyd's The Wall. Still listen to it to this day. Awesome exhibit here at the Rock Hall. There's the wife. I don't think she really listened to it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Even more awesome, we can see Lake Erie out the window. Yeah, there it is. One of the Great Lakes. Well, we're gonna go see some more. All right, another shot of that Pink Floyd The Wall exhibit. It's pretty cool. You can see the skyline here. So this is the famous Michael Jackson Thriller jacket that he wore in the show, in the video. Okay, here's the Inner Sandman lyrics, scratched out on paper. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, we are done at the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Another shot of the skyline of Cleveland. Took several hours to go through. What'd you think? I liked it a lot. I was disappointed that there wasn't a bigger display on Prince, who's my favorite. Yeah, I, I, I thought there'd be more to it. We didn't, there wasn't really a Guns N' Roses. Uh, display and who else is missing? I mean, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, we, saw some Fleetwood Mac we did okay. I didn't see much Fleetwood Mac. Uh, I don't know, it seemed like a lot was missed, but oh well, it was worth the trip in it. Yeah, it was, I liked it, I definitely liked it. There was just you know, I would have liked more on Prince, definitely. And you would have liked more on Prince, Prince and Guns N' Roses. Yeah, almost favorite. nothing on Guns N' Roses. Probably my two faves overall. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to take a look around, oh, see what's no. down here. It's too damn cold. Even though, yeah, it's very miserable. Yeah, I like the skyline a lot. I would love to get some drone footage of it, but it's just too damn windy. There's the wife over there. She's going back in the Rock Hall of Fame, which is right there. Because she's cold. That's why I usually don't take her on these jaunts. You guys understand now? <laughs> but while she's in there, I'm gonna go down here to the uh, shores of Lake Erie, see what interesting things I can find. It's a nice walk. All right, another shot of the Hall of Fame. Yeah, this is Lake Erie. Huge ship over here. I'm guessing it's probably a museum. Let's go take a look. So this is the William G. Mather. It's a steamship built in 1925. It's a museum now. That's pretty awesome, huh? There's a drawbridge right here. 
All right, so there's a drawbridge here. It's up, so I can't go over there. That bird can go over there. Seagull. Can you hear, uh, hear the wind? I'm sure you can. Freaking cold. It's, uh, geez, 40s here in Cleveland in May. Ah, oh. this is miserable. This is not the kind of weather this Texan likes. Steamship William J. Mather, the ship that built Cleveland. It's not open today though. It's big. I bet this is an interesting tour, but alas, not today. Get another look at the stadium that the Browns play in. All right, I'm at the other end of the William J. Mather steamship. See the waters of Lake Erie. You better bet they're probably ice cold. Very quiet over here. Look, I got a couple of uh, lighthouses in that direction. Right in the middle of the frame. They're kind of far away. I'm not sure if you can see them. Pretty cool. Giving you a look at what I'm seeing. Look, there's dead fish on the ground. You can hear that wind, huh? It's cold. Just letting you know. <laughs> it is cold. All right, I'm gonna go get the wife. We're gonna probably head into town, go to a bar, have a drink. We are heading towards the next place, a bar. We're gonna have a little drinky drink. Uh, this is where you make a left turn. This yeah. is where you, okay. Yeah, but you can't turn left You're here. Making a Fudge. Can't turn left here. So I'm going to. What the hell are we going to do? Yeah, uh, Australian Siri doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Yeah, East 17th Street. Sorry. No, wait, on the one coming up, Chester Avenue. All right, there's the Cleveland skyline. We are heading to a bar. We're going to have a drinky drink, right? Yeah, so. We Might just, as well. Who used to go to this bar? Bart Simpson? No. I haven't even told, told him the name of this bar yet. Hold on. <laughs> well, we're going to walk up to this bar. Let's get a little closer. Okay, we're almost here. Moe's Tavern. Now, you guys are thinking, hey, isn't that the name of the bar in The Simpsons? Did they uh, steal the name from Simpsons? No, just the opposite. Some of the Simpsons writers, when they were developing the show, used to come to this bar and named that bar on the TV show after this bar. So this is the bar that inspired Moe's Tavern in The Simpsons. And that's where we're gonna go now. Because I do like The Simpsons. So uh, go in, I'm following you. Why don't, why don't I call myself Marge and you call yourself Marge? Let's I don't see. know. All right, then in we go. All right, I'm having my usual Guinness. I'm looking at the menu. Thank you. My wife is having Jack and water. And they even have a picture of Mo in here. The inspiration. And there he is. Mo. <laughs> yeah, they have this inside here. It's pretty cool. Let's see what else they got. It's a small bar. Yeah. 
hole in the wall place. It's my favorite kind of place. It's only four o'clock, so uh, I'm sure this place gets a lot busier. All right, lizard drained. Let's take another look at this bar. Yeah, it's very small. A little pinball machine, and that's it. All right, let's look at that menu. It's kind of small, isn't it? Pretzels, ring rolls, pretzels. I'm gonna have some chicken tidbits, what do you think? Sure. How boring is that? But okay. Or maybe pickle fries. It's not or boring fried... if you're a 16 year old girl. Or maybe fried pickles. That's probably what I'm gonna get. Fried pickles. fried pickles are here. Are they good? Let's see. They came out so fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they came out so fast. Yeah, they're good. Yummy. Still at Moe's. It's a cool lamp, isn't it? Yeah, the wife caught that. We're heading out now, back to the hotel. 